SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four wheel drive Jeep a Jeep podcast starring industry experts pure monosity what what, what? say that again with mad scientist Scott Brown use my drill press as a sort of lathe our host Neil Simpson if one light goes out they all go out filled with shenanigans we, we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. Small lathe, small bed lathe. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever, however you are joining us. This is the I Speak Jeep podcast, episode number 23. I am your host, Neil, with SFJ4x4.com, and my esteemed colleague, friend, mad scientist. Scott Brown slash bearing uh, installer on our transmission this morning. Bearing installation. <laughs> bearing installation. Where you take a dab of grease and place a bearing. Dab of grease. And oh, rinse needle? Feet. Yes. Oh, little needle. Little needle. Little needle. Little needle. Those of you who don't know, sometimes uh, transmissions have a uh, transmissions transfer case, especially our older, more mechanical. Um, you know, I would say, I would venture to say pre 85, 80, 80, well, technically. So you can even go in with that, past that, but. We'll say 80s-ish. <clears throat> basically, you have this little this little pin, right? Yes. I mean, basically, as I say, it's just a little pin. It's Imagine a pickup hardened metal. But with grease and transmission parts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with grease, that's like our U-joints. U-joints yes. are, are similar construction still. A crap, a, yes. a, a if captured you ever needle there. a U-joint cap, you know my thing. Yes. You drop a, you <laughs> drop a U-joint cap and it scatters across your not freshly swept oh, floor no, it's never clean never clean when never. never clean when you drop that i'm gonna pull my hat up i didn't have a fun hat to wear today i thought about wearing something it's like really unfortunate like a bucket but i did not wear my actually hat several all weeks in a row now my og I, hat and then your newer hat yes that's true <laughs> look at you do have the og hat the and OG i have hat. the new version that's of the so fitted because it's an og hat it's well it's well loved yes it has some wear adventures everywhere yes Which, and then you know what's sad is i really have to wear it everywhere now hmm I, my wife, I was working on my car in the driveway. Oh, she thought you were Jeff. Sunny day. No. no. Oh, okay. And I didn't have my hat on because it, it was, you know. <laughs> oh, you burned your bald spot. And she's like, honey. Um, and she yelled at my kids, hey, go get dad a hat. <laughs> like, what, what's happening? She's like, your head's red already. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it you're was awesome. It was so gorgeous. I made sure I got out and got my uh, my vitamin D yesterday. Yeah. Was it just yesterday? Oh man, it was such a long weekend. It felt good. It did. It, but it reached like eighty five yesterday. It was crazy. It was wild hot. Yes. And then um, just if we typically do our, our little updates, and I'll just kind of uh, I will just kind of <clears throat> bridge this subject, right? We usually say, "Oh, what did you do this weekend? What did you do?" You know that kind of stuff. So I worked on the uh, the Camp Shack house build, right? Yeah. Um, and again, those of you who are joining us listening, uh, my wife and I bought this derelict, uh, tiny, tiny house, uh, yes. which we've installed on eight acres of property. And then we've sufficiently gutted it. And in the process of the last, you know, six weeks or better of gutting it, we took all the burn wood and put it into one spot mm. with some of this, you know, heavy thicket. So yesterday I thought it was a good idea to light it up and, and fire. Nope. I got to tell you, I, I panicked. I don't windy. panic very often. It was dry. Uh -huh. It was hot. Yep. And it was very windy. Yes. And I'm telling you, I'm... far from the house, was it? Well, it's sufficiently far from the house. And to my benefit, it is sufficiently far from the road and just kind of just on the other yeah. side of this There's little no mole. no danger to anyone else, just the tiny house. No, no, place. there wasn't a danger... <laughs> Other than the fact that it was horrendously inappropriate as far as the size of the fire, because I started like a little like a little fire over here, and I thought, oh, had hot dogs and marshmallows, <clears> and a and a fire extinguisher. We all know <laughs> wait, how. Wait, you had an extinguisher. We know how I good don't I am you. with fire extinguishers. I don't believe you. <laughs> I was safely <laughs> equipped within the city limits for this. That's why you had food. To two story fire. this two story <laughs> bonfire uh, that I. You don't Oh, at all. I it's just one of those moments where I walk back like I'm walking like it's like that meme where like there's somebody like the house is exploding behind them, you know, and there's this two story bonfire happening. And I thought, why do I do this to myself? Why is very brilliant, but short lived fire when it's that it 
fortunately, that was <laughs> sort of the case. Yes. That all of this, you know, 20, 30 year old dry wood from the good it's, hardwood, it's right? It was these oak cabinets from the 90s, um, you know, early 2000s. Perfectly. That was great cooking surface. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, in this interview, we, uh, this interview, oh boy, I'm, I'm interviewing you today, Barry. Yeah. Uh, in this episode, of uh, the I Speak Jeep SFJ 4x4 podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about the engines of the present, present right? Day. Present day. So we had done the uh, no replacement for displacement conversation. Started about three weeks ago at this point. Um, and uh, we talked, you know, a little precursor of what the conversation would be like. And then we did, we were supposed to just do a few minutes on old engines. Yeah, kind of wheels fell off that. Wheels just the bus careened downhill. <laughs> yes. Got real excited. Yeah. Speaking our language like a lot, a lot, yeah. And we're going to talk about engines we like a lot today. Yep. The engines of present, yes. Uh, not so much the 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 unknown future, but the present. Yep. And uh, there was some stuff that happened over the weekend. We're going to have uh, maybe Jeffrey fill us in on that. Yep. Uh, our media team was present at the uh, kickoff for a, a new club in the area. Um, actually, I think their shirt is behind us. Um, okay. Really nice looking shirt, honestly. Especially that white and red logo. On the top. Yeah, that's a that's a cool looking logo, and it <laughs> pops with the American flag on, the, on there as well. And then, uh, uh, you know, then we're gonna we're gonna well we we have our, our uh, those of you who are listening in we have our hashtag not sponsored product spotlight, yep. which is the oh uh, Vanna White hands, uh, the JKS quicker disconnects. And uh, one of our favorites. Yes. Staple. Staple on 90% of SFJ yes. Jeeps and builds. Yep. And then lastly, as usual, folks, Scott and I are going to make fools of ourselves playing some game that uh, Jeffrey the Italian Stallion has twisted up in his mind. If we don't get too excited about engines, we'll talk the entire podcast <sighs> about engines. I know, but I'm so ready to go on engines. <laughs> so I saw... I saw, so you heard about my, my, my tiny house and then my son mowed about six acres. Yeah. Uh, I saw he wants to get a mower. It's very, very Neil. My, you know, S-Cup-in. my eight year old had Great got the new business conscious bus- has his newspaper out. He does. He was, he went out, he found, he, he got like a, like a trading times, you know, area shopper paper. Yes. And he was all enthralled because some, there was a misprint. I'm going to say that was a misprint. And it had a push mower for forty four dollars and ninety five cents, and I think that they were trying to did do you like. Make that listing? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sounds, think that sounds like something you would do. Something we would do, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, I, I think that it was maybe like forty four ninety five a month. You know, oh, like it was a nice push mower, and they would do six monthly payments of forty four ninety five. It was, you know. But if, I mean, I didn't realize this was happening. My wife knew it was happening. He had approached her. She had taken some pictures. He had a business plan. He had a business plan. So <laughs> we get into the Jeep uh, to, to go work on the house. And he, he's, he, I mean, he, he's sitting in the seat with me or the next to me. And he goes, he has his newspaper and he, he pulls it out and he goes, Dad, uh, I'd like to access my bank um, because I believe that I can pull uh, $45 out of my bank account yep. and I buy this push mower. Yes. And I was like, buddy, what are you going to do with a push mower? And he was like, I'm going to make money. I'm going to I'm going to start a business. And I was you like, no, he's like, Browns are not thinking about that. <laughs> he's not my thinking my about son that. polished his riding lawnmower he got for free. Yes. Over the weekend, polished to rust. And he's like, Dad, polished. look how good this looks. I'm like, great job, buddy. <laughs> I, I said, buddy, wait, I bought a brand new push mower last year. He goes, I know. But when you're push mowing, I can be push mowing and we can just do it twice as fast. It is fun to tan and mow with your child. It, it's a good, it's a good feeling, right? Yep. And I push mow, and he ride him. He 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 runs the tractor these days. Yep. But he wants his own. He wants that ownership. Yes. Good for him. Yep. Did he procure one? Uh, we, we I managed to talk him out of it for the time being. He okay. he's he's really he's really bent on a side by side. Mm. He he thinks that somehow uh, we're gonna magically poof together. <laughs> you know. Tens of thousands of dollars for a new side by side. That sounds like, again, something like now he'll be hauling home parts of a side by side to assemble <laughs> and to push into a pile of a side by side. Right. Well, well you right. can tell him that Uncle Scott might have an extra push mower. Oh. That we might be able to procure. Oh. So I almost must you do that when I saw that post. I was like, oh, I'll wait. Let let the see the excitement subsides. Let but it subside I bet you he's going to be obfuscated on this for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His six weeks. <laughs> right? His six weeks of fascination. 
Yes. All right. So on cool things, yep. uh, you 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 brought the thirty six out into the sunlight. I was very ambitious uh, yesterday, and then my wife came home from work from being very ambitious, and took it up like five steps. I was like ready to like go in, take a shower. I'm good. Hey, we'll do this eventually. And she's like, I moved 25 cases of pop today. Oh, Let's she was do feeling this. strong. She's like, rah. Feeling strong. It's just a, yeah, there's completely covered with stuff and there's stuff underneath the body and there's an, you know, all this stuff in front of it. But we, it's not that bad. We can do this. I love her. So she's awesome. So we moved everything and then, uh, it, Moved the, the cart underneath there, and then, of course, I'd use ratchet straps to put the body up in the air. Oh, of course. So, you know, ratchet straps go up really good. Yeah. They release going down. They, Poorly. So, so I did the high lift it where I went up and moved it down, down a couple of clicks. Oh, no, you were literally thumb moving thumb your moving ratchet straps. Ratchet straps. Up and, and down. And then we uh, haphazardly jack cradle things to move the the cart up the meet the body in the back so then we could move the sawhorse back and then slowly put it down and then the biggest problem my my situation is half my driveway is paved and half is not right the part i decide to work out of is not right so it rolled out of the 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 cold side relatively nicely and then we had to turn the corner and it promptly got stuck in the rocks and uh, dug trenches, you know, three and a half inches deep. So then there was lots of, like, jacking. and. What cart were you using? I saw that you borrowed a cart. I, I borrowed a cart from our, our local carburetor specialist. Oh, uh, okay. That he had put his Model A body on. And then I, he's like, oh, you can add whatever you want to it or modify it. So I actually widened it out a lot and had some extra gussets and cross members that, that it's a little disappointing to hear because i really expected to like use a bed frame or something so i had a bed frame oh perfect and i thought about using a bed frame but the wheels are this big yeah and there's rocks that are yes bigger than big. the wheels i was hoping <laughs> so that, I it was, that would be fail i really felt like you of all people would have used like a bed frame when it's like literally leaning against the wall <laughs> so that i could do that but I thought, you know, your, the way that your wife has the access to certain, you know, uh, wholesale distribution carts. Yes. That they would, we would, no. there would be precarious welding uh, of of those types of, you know, kind of but pneumatic luckily, wheels you know, to a bed frame. You know, older friend was like, hey, don't do any of that mess. Just come borrow my my cart that's been sitting behind my shop for three years, and then uh, give it a grease job if you would. So I had to make the wheels turn again sure. and swivel. Again. Sure. <laughs> He's a good dude. He is. You know, I we we've, we've brought up Bob on the on on previous, and we've got a lot of Bobs that we work yes. with, honestly. So it's I'm very I'm good there. Name. Um, but he is our local carburetor specialist. Yes. Um, so when we've done carburetor rebuilds and tuning, um, or going through them to see, you know, just how do they function? Yes. He's our go-to uh, SFJ by proxy employee. Yep. So. Yep, great guy, and but you know we we conquered vintage flathead builder, and we got the uh, body in, into the other side, so now I can start cutting uh, rust out and welding new stuff in, and look we'll start to, to see. Look forward to those updates on your Instagram. Yep, yep, cool. and, and if you do follow me on that, I did do an uh, update on that and Facebook both. Absolutely. And uh, it's a fun project to follow you on a personal. I've actually had a number of people reach out to me and be like, Scott is an animal because he <laughs> he's got, you know, we have folks, we have nothing shy of, you know, six or seven CJs in rotation here at SFJ. Yep. Um, good paid in customers who are, you know, expecting their Jeeps in a timely manner yep. um, <clears throat> on, on top of doing front end services for the business, for our, our general service uh, guys, and then you go home and you work on the 36, and, and yep. that's pretty pretty stinking impressive. Yeah. And like I said, somebody literally brought it up the other day, and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's a monster. <laughs> yeah, good for him, right? Yeah. So that, that's important, folks. You uh, can see those updates. I don't know how to updates. not car. It has to be 24-7, 365. Well, and to say you can actually follow one of his primary projects here, the hashtag not a restoration yep. on our Instagram. We're doing uh, kind of build update posts and i have a, a little teaser that we're going to be unveiling that jeep at a pretty sizable event in the near future yep. so that's the that jeep sizable event near future that's what yep. you get so make sure you follow along with the build as that one comes together that was the transmission you were working on yep. or yeah yep. it's beautiful beautiful stuff so 
Uh, I think at this point in time, uh, Jeffrey, do you want to tell us about the Freedom Crawlers? Are you? Yeah, I can. Because we talk we about pointed that. out their 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 gnarly. Oh Easy. my gosh, I <laughs> guys, I. Here's this JK. I'm using my Gatorade to support that. Just you so can't you see uh, if <laughs> no, you're listening on your favorite streaming platform. <laughs> we have this beautiful JKS Quicker Disconnect set uh, here posed between you know Scott and I, and it looks so nice, right? It's at like a you know, like a 35, 40 degree angle, yes. you know, just kind of entering the screen. Well and planned. <clears throat> well planned. <laughs> and uh, what we discovered as we went to shoot, uh, of course, live. If you you can join us on Facebook live every Monday at ten nineteen. Or last week, we kind of pulled a fast one on you and pre-recorded that one. <laughs> See how that one went. Yep. Um, and uh, you can watch us here, then obviously watch on YouTube. Yeah. We wanted to make sure you could see. We wanted to make sure you could see it. Yeah. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a reveal. Or should I not? <laughs> no, go ahead. What I'm going to do it. Oh! <laughs> there's our expensive <laughs> backdrop. I had a qualifier. Jeffrey's Gatorade. <laughs> I was only going within uh, six to ten feet of the... Of the, table of, the here. Of, of our studio itself, and I fully support that. Yes. And I, I looked over and I thought, "Wow, Jeff's Gatorade looks <laughs> like it would be a perfect, perfect for this. Perfect thing to it's hold meant. up." This. Who needs an angled support? An that's actual purposely made purpose for it. built, you know, a nice little well, we crib. Could just steal his drink. <laughs> we could steal our producer's he's like, drink. I guess I will go get something else to drink that's what now. He, said. he goes, "Well, I guess I'll go get another drink." <laughs> that's that's your inside trooper. look of how we do our studio here. <laughs> <laughs> I, professional I've guys. said it once and I'll say it again god I swear guys we're really professional at what we <laughs> all do all the time professional <laughs> um, so freedom crawlers event it was their kickoff event at the winery at Spring Hill mm -hmm. um, very nice event they had door prizes that they were pretty much giving away from the start of the event right up till the end nice um, you didn't have to do anything to get a door prize other than show up okay that's cool um, so that, how that, many jeeps showed up I, I want to say it was around 40. Uh, there was 29 on the side we were on, and then, uh, of course, we were in the area that wasn't a parking lot. Sure. Uh, yeah. As Food far as the parking actual lot. parking lot, there was some more Jeeps over there. I didn't get a good look at how many. That's pretty uh, healthy, though. We drive Jeeps. We don't for, need parking lots. For a kickoff event and a, you know, kind of a afternoon affair, that's a healthy That's yeah, a healthy. That's really good. Yep. Uh, we got, so just a quick picture here if you're watching. Uh, that's our booth we had set up. It was a good-looking little booth. It is. Kep kept it clean. Yep. Showcased what we do. Yep. And then big shout out to uh, to you, the Italian Stallion, and the Savage for representing uh, SFJ. So thank you guys. And then this was a picture from in front of the winery. Oh, you can see the jeeps parked on there. Very hill. nice. That's awesome. Um, you know, it was, it was a great turnout. You had uh, Micah Bidwell, Tracy Bidwell, uh, Gary Beckwith, and Sandy Beckwith. Uh, the founders were there meeting and greeting with everybody. Davey did a great job with video. We did an interview with, with the founders um, on social media soon. We'll have that released. Right. I think we'll, we'll be putting that out on YouTube here shortly. Um, otherwise, it was just a nice nice get together. And look at that um, beautiful sky. Oh, what a gorgeous day for it. It was yes. perfect weather for it. Uh, poor Davey shows up in a hoodie and long sleeve shirts. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> mind you, he, sh he shows up to my house like that to meet me as I'm taking the, the top and the doors off the Jeep. And I'm like, what, what are you doing, Davey? Well, he was staying <laughs> warm on the drive. <laughs> it gets windy. So Freedom Crawlers did have shirts available um, and memberships. You could be like, you could like that shirt, like that shirt back there. <laughs> There's a shirt back there. Um, so you could you could purchase the shirts individually. You could join membership. Membership is free to join, or they have a sponsored membership. It was I think forty dollars, and you can go to their meetings as a voting member, things like that. Very nice. So and and do you offhand know what their mission statement is? I know they've supplied me with a lot of paperwork. It's very organized so far. Jeeping with a mission, and uh, I believe they're they're doing a strong support of our veterans Correct. and um, <clears throat> one of the founding members uh, a shout out to him and his wife run an organization in Ashtabula uh, we are located in Ashtabula County but there is actually a city called Ashtabula as well uh, and the their organization that they run there is called Feed the Vets and uh, they do uh, free meals and uh, like a food pantry specifically for veterans so uh, a huge service to our our, our military um, and, and obviously veterans who 
are in need. And so I think that a good part of their Jeep in with a mission is truly a philanthropic process to kind of marry, uh, you know, the Jeep community and, you know, active social community support. So <laughs> should be should be cool to see where they go. Um, good causes. Good yeah. causes. Uh, and again, just a, another good organization. If you're looking for somebody to get involved in, this area is rich with clubs. Yep. Um, we have great clubs from, you know, from Pennsylvania to Ohio up into New York. And so big, big shout out to all those. And then obviously the national clubs and the ones that are represented on all the social media sites. Um, but here's a, a local one you can get involved with. And, and I think they're really trying to take this you know, to that next level. So best oh, of luck with that. I realize that I need to get the uh, Blue Jeep Crew decals on my Jeep because at that event, somebody stuck a Blue Jeep Crew business card on my windshield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I really got to put that decal on there. Oh, so that my gosh. Know. That's funny. That's right. That's right. Cause, uh, another Jeep big Blue Jeep Crew love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blue Jeep Crew Love, absolutely. And I like to, to, to say I'm an honorary member of that one um, based on old Blue, yep. who, who hasn't seen the light of day in, in too too long. I looked at him longingly the other day, and I thought, i got to do something with you. <laughs> got to yep. do something with you. <clears throat> Anywho, um, so it was a pretty cool event. I know, folks, if you're interested in doing some cool Jeep stuff in the near future, you can head over to our website. Our events page is well-maintained with – current events uh, we have a, a an embedded google calendar and then um that you can find events that are happening within a relative uh market radius uh if you're you know listening to us and and these are typically big events and then a number of national events that you can get involved with um and there's a big push into the summer and, and sometimes keeping track of all those events is challenging that's why we're trying to do it for you so head over to sfj4x4.com events tab and check that out you know if you're also actually running an event and notice it's not on our calendar feel free to reach out to us we'd be happy to put it on there that's a, a great way for us to support the jeep community in that process so engines engines we're so excited about engines we and, are. and we've already done you know 20 minutes so <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we could easily burn this for, for engines. You know what? I was listening to a number of other podcasts, both in our industry and beyond, and uh, they are put on by far more skilled individuals than you or I as far as audio. Uh, yeah. They're more like the Jeff characters. Yes. Or like, you know, hey, I was a DJ for a long time. Yeah. And a couple but, of these but places- they know engines? But they don't know <laughs> engines like us. Like I, I'm not disrespecting them, but they no. know how to like- make great vocal sounds for transitions. Yes. So like if there are, you know, Jeffrey usually comes at us with these great transitions. Yeah. Like we should have had like oh, a revving engine. We should have had a, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. But like we could have had like a vroom, vroom, vroom. So like yeah. these other people, uh, they do their own transitions yeah. on air because they're not actually having a great producer you like Jeffrey You don't here. want us to do that. <laughs> I was going to say, could, Dave, could Davey beatbox that for us? Oh, Davey. It Savage, happened. bring it in. I apologize. Bring it in. <laughs> no, you didn't like my my engine revving. Good that was way. too. That good, was good to do. Savage. That was like don't do that. That was like small block Chevy. I think that was like uh, a high revving. What's a four o sound like? I, I think it was. What does was a four like o say? Bum, 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 ba -doom, ba -doom. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's more of a four o sound. We should actually. That could just be a game. Was making engine noises. No. No. <laughs> anyway, well, let's talk know, about engines. Maybe maybe I could just play engine sounds, and you guys have to guess what <gasps> engine it is. Oh my gosh! <laughs> now that I, I am get so behind. excited. I am so no excited Italian. about that. There, there you have it, folks. There's a future game. Yes. Wait a second. Do we, we can't have, do we have Ferrari to, and stuff though. We have to contextualize the exhaust as well. Yeah. All right. We have parameters, <laughs> but we're open to playing. Yeah, I like that. I like that. All right. All right. All right. So. We had, we had talked about uh, no replacement for displacement, right? And yeah. or, or, or is, is there? there? Yes, and because uh, obviously the love affair with uh, the four by e that is fostering in society right now, or, um, or even the two o. I'll go out and the limb and say that as well. So, well, and <laughs> not that I haven't talked enough already, um, <laughs> but last week. We did a uh, a two o, so we have a customer with a, a two o turbo, and so those of you who are, are not exactly familiar, it, uh, is it e assist as well? Uh, the, his is not e assist. Okay, um, but his his is straight uh, horse purse from you know from a displacement 
you know, situation. Not situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he's on 37s? He's on 37s. So we have re geared him um, to 456, 488s. I think 488s because they're popular. And it's a JL. And so if you're not familiar with the 2O was released technically in 18, but really it was in 19 models, yes. to my knowledge. Um, because and we actually built a wicked 2O that we showcased at uh, Toledo yes. Jeep Fest. And it seems like locally, at least with our, our local dealers, the 2O is f- extremely popular. It is popular. It's a four cylinder, right? Yeah. And so we are, as Americans, you yeah, know. It's a four cylinder. It's a four cylinder. It's got this weird little round thing with this wheel that spins, spins up I and forces underst- air. I don't understand how this works. All right. It's scary. So we re-geared this thing, uh, you know, about a year ago, yep. and that customer's hooked, and he's having a good time with it. Yep. And he recently reached out because, uh, as we had uh, talked about Mishimoto in the past, mm-hmm. uh, they specialize in all things, you know, performance, and so, you know, air and cooling delivery. Yep. They had created an intercooler pipe, which is intended to flow better mm-hmm. and... Um, you know, and dissipate heat supposedly, and, and a number of other things. We'll see how that yeah. you know plays out. So they've done a, a an improved intercooler pipe, and then we use the Super Chips Pulsar XT, which is a special, which is a special. It's two O specific. It is two O specific, yep. and it is an inline computer harness, yep. and so you plug into the turbo, you plug into. Uh, it turn, plugs gate. into a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> plugs into a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it does magic. Uh, data com system, the whole thing. Okay. It, it makes your 2O turn into a 392. It was <laughs> flat out spectacular. Uh, yes. Let, let's just let, I'm gonna just take a moment and think about the fact that this 2O would sit. I power braked it. I'm doing air quotes. Power brake this 2O. And it it had uh and it's not like cruddy tires. These are BF, uh, BFG KO twos, good tread on them. Yep. And it sat at the light, and it just sat there and broke the tires free. And it was like whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. Four cylinder, folks. Four cylinder. And then I was I did a roll at twenty miles per hour. So the customer shows up, and I said, uh, I'm gonna take you for a ride. <laughs> he was like. Well, I was like, well, hey, let's take it for a ride. And he like walked over to the driver's seat. And I was like, mm, no, I'm going to drive, <laughs> right? So we pull out to the – Shake l- those keys back. I took – yeah, I had the keys. I never gave it to no. him. You know what I mean? But he's thinking like, well, okay, I'm going to take my Jeep for a ride. He's, I'm like, no, I'm going to drive you. Uh, you have to <clears throat> down a notch. Passenger seat. Passenger seat. Go over there. He's <laughs> like, oh, it's weird to climb into this side. I was like, oh, you know. So I go out to the stop sign, and I kind of like – I pause, and I'm, I'm trying to communicate – Ex, you know, like kind of expressly to our customers when I'm going to do kind of like you know a little bigger than life things. Would you like and I to said, do some redneck stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to the guy, I said, um, "I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of push the limits on your Jeep. Are you okay with that?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm okay." I broke the tires free through the intersection. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> we don't in, condone in a closed track. <laughs> yes, <with> professionals <laughs> in Mexico. In Mexico, <laughs> yes. Transported it to Mexico. You should not break your tires <laughs> loose at traffic lights and, and stop signs. And on this said closed course, <laughs> as I was drifting <laughs> around the corner, I was I took the customer and we, we, we great expense have houses and street signs on this closed course. It was a very <laughs> very very um, authentic closed course. And uh, the SFJ circuit. The, the yes. circuit, right? And so we 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 you know, we had done that, and he was like, he was like, his eyes were big. He was like, oh my god, it can do this. This is wild. I actually got us rolling somewhere between eighteen and twenty miles per hour, and I matted it, and it broke the tires free again. <laughs> it was it was just awesome. Yes, and that's that's out of it's a, amazing with that little a round four thing cylinder, does. that turbo. And so what's really cool is, and I I don't quite uh, know the specifics, so I don't want to exactly misspeak, but I know factually that the XT, the Pulsar XT, plugs into the turbo. And I think somehow it sort encourages <laughs> it. I just computer control of the turbo. Mm-hmm. So it, it controls b- boost pressure, but doesn't actually plug into the turbo. But I a, understood that I saw that there's it had waste gates and, and stuff like that. That if they stay closed longer, then it ups the it pressure. It helps ups the pressure. That her, helps hers purse uh, of, right. the, of the Jeep. All right, but well, it doesn't thank actually you. plug in. This is the why turbo. you're employed. We'll do the we'll do the XT as a featured product in the future here. Right, but it, exactly, it plugs into the wastegate of the turbo, 
forcing the turbo to spool up uh, sooner. Sort of. But doesn't yes. lag. Doesn't lag. It doesn't have the the same amount of lag. No. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it has more boosted power than it did stock. It was very boosty. Mm-hmm. Very boosty. But where does that all come from, right? And so the last uh, the Technology. last episode. Well, and that's what I told the customer. I said, I'll just be very honest with you. This is an amazing vehicle, but for how tech heavy it is, I am concerned for it in five to seven years. Yeah, I am as well. Uh, one of the first 18s uh, we had in, I chose to do a frame off on. You chose. I love that you chose <laughs> to do that. Well, I did it my own way. Uh, we only. We didn't open any cooling system on that. It was very impressive. We didn't open the brake system on that. Um, but we had all of the stuff was exposed, and I can tell you that that, that motor is going to be very hard to work on in your driveway. We can do it in-house, and, and thankfully, you know, we're not those big guys that are going to take advantage. Um, but it is going to be very challenging for a DIYer to do that stuff in the future. You imagine but changing the starter on it? No. <laughs> and the one I did was E assist, so it had all the things right. on it. Um but it's amazing what they can do with a small displacement engine and they get really decent mileage to my knowledge as well. Right. Um I mean at this point I, I it makes me sad a little bit, but a three six that is no slouch. That's you know, a couple steps away from three hundred horsepower. Absolutely. And this two oh will eat it for lunch. No problem. Won't yes. even hesitate. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe the supercharger on a 3.6 might do similarly, but I bet you it's still, I don't know. It'd be an interesting head-to-head. Yeah. Well, and we are um, <clears throat> we are doing a 3.6, uh, supercharged 3.6 this week. We're using yep. a Magnuson supercharger. So we will be um, able to tell you firsthand. And that Jeep is also uh, 48 gears. And uh, it happens to be on 38s, yeah. not the end of the world there. There's a uh, difference is concerned. And, and we've but. done, you know, uh, blowers on a JK era, 3.6s before and, and other things. So we have experience with that, and we know what those do. But the, the technology that are in the JL is what we really are interested in seeing what it does, similarly to the 2.0. So our conversation uh, last week or for last week's episode took us up to about 1991. Yep. And uh, we we pretty much skirted over a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah, right? but now now we got to get into the historic engines until '97. What? <laughs> what is you, Jeffrey talking the about? The historic plates. Oh, <laughs> it hurts me, Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, why do you say mean things to us? Yes. I, I tried. Uh, I said something to my my family. We were sitting around over the weekend, and I <clears throat> I said, you know what the state classifies as a historical vehicle and they all they they produced the 70s they thought that Mm. the 70s and i was like no the state considers that meme that's like what we think is 15 years ago and what is actually 15 years ago yep Yep. yeah i mean the 70s were 50 years ago yep five zero yep so um needless to say 97 so historical engines according (laughs) to jeffrey yeah the the 40 80s is almost 40 years ago that's, okay. That's Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to talk about engines. I'm going to talk about engines here. Yeah. Uh, as far as in '91, we have the the HO. Yes. Right. And so we're coming out of carbur carburation. Yes. And and we're and scary fuel injection. Right. So. Yep. And I'll uh, go as far as you know. We were starting to get in this magical time where they had figured out how to make it emissions friendly without doing a bunch of extra stuff for the time. Um, they had figured out the systems for so it was actually simple. They had 190 horsepower, mm-hmm. uh, which was really good for a straight six. It was healthy six. for a straight six at the time, um, and and it was just really simple to work on. It just worked. You know, this is where the 300,000 mile plus four liter era came from. Everybody touted that. Everybody right? and AMC had a healthy healthy uh, you know start on things. Right? Yeah, the, the, they got the, the ball rolling. And Chrysler came in and just knocked it out of the park, and and arguably that's better. the motor that everybody kind of kind yes. of loved. They really yeah. fell in love with Jeeps in that era. Yeah, you, you get people come in like, well, and you, you see the mist come over their eyes. They're like, well, I used to have a Jeep, and had that four liter. Yes, and and they're remembering 
how just faithful it was. Well, and the fact that they could just beat on it, yes. put it away wet, didn't and, it, care. and it didn't care. No. Nope. Right? I mean, and other other motors at the time were far more finicky. Yes. Um, for, I mean, you can make a four-liter blow up, but you got to work at it yeah. and keep working at it. And then finally, it's got to be like, in bad shape. And, and I know motors that had had rods out missing out the side of the block. There's a cylinder missing. It's still running. It's still running. It's like, meh. Yep. <clears throat> I don't care. I had, a, <laughs> I had a yard Jeep at one time uh, that <clears throat> in the very, very early years, uh, I bought it, I don't, know, I don't know, New York or something. It was just a yard Jeep at the time. And it was before I had the Comanche, before I got the Comanche from you for the yard Jeep. Yep. <clears throat> and this thing had such a bad rod knock. It was wah, 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 wah. Yep. And it just ran. Don't, don't, know, co- don't didn't care. care. You know, Did not care. other motors, that's a kiss of death. That's going to blow up and lock up. Four liter, don't care. No, no. As long as oil is sort of still in there, yeah, doesn't care. So, so we have the 4.0, um, which, which in, in its uh, probably one of its most successful runs, debuts in, in 91, which is really uh, specific to the head, yes. right? So, the, the, the 4.0, again, that's if you're familiar, head, exhaust, and intake. I'll go a little bit further. Okay. Okay, your 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 air delivery, yes. air and fuel delivery. That was where it was all at, and computer control, and we we kept basically the same uh, formula all the way up to ninety five. Now, interestingly, what happens in ninety five, and I'm going to let you talk about that, but you yep. know, I have to contextualize his, historically. Yes, what's going on in the world at that point in time? Prior to right, so obviously we have fuel crisis in the seventies, yep. and uh, and now emissions are really an important conversation. Yes. And, and Feeling yeah, the pressure of the <clears throat> thumb on you. Feeling the pressure. The auto, auto manufacturers is, you know, community conversation is really coming about how much are our vehicles putting up into the atmosphere and yep. into our local, you know, local, uh, you know, health habitats and whatnot. And if you ever have to uh, completely understand where we came from and where we are in this time period is go open the hood in like a 90 or an 85 CJ7 and all the hoses and switches and and that's what things. I was getting at exactly. And, and tubing that's required to make that friendly to the earth and then open the hood on like a 92 YJ. And and that is exactly where I was getting at was if we look in that in that mid 80s as we really try to understand emissions control, yes. right? Efficient Internal combustion involved at least thirty foot of quarter inch and vacuum, right? Vacuum so I mean, we had we had <laughs> vacuum was a, a huge part of yes. how these engines worked. And it switched and, and air pumps there, and over here. And and, <laughs> yep, and air pumps and recirculating and reburning and and then um, funny thing is, folks, if you're kind of unfamiliar, the cat the cats. Uh, it's interesting because yes. we have catalytic converters, right? And so what would happen is the catalytic converter uh, would collect particulate matter from your, you know, exhaust. N- your exhaust that wasn't fully combusted. Yes. It would collect in there. Now, obviously, we have to have some precious metals and precious materials. Yep. And then there was a pipe that was intended to recirculate. So you know how you're having your fire, if you're not, Neil, and you don't actually have a huge bonfire from all the, the dry stuff. Let me tell you how much going. I really wanted those fire blankets. There were so many people. Your wife gave us fire blankets. People, Other people offered fire blankets. I really thought for the moment, do you know how much I ended up stomping on fire that oh was trying to go into like the burnt grass of the oh yard? No. I this mean, is why you're supposed to have a hose for large fires like mm. that. <clears throat> not just hey, an I'm just not going to engage Jeff. <laughs> but I Make really thought for a second, right I, I need the fire blanket. And I'm panicking because I'm out there by myself on so the acres. if you're Scott back, Brown right. and you're trying to have a campfire for your hot dog in your backyard over the weekend, it was so nice, and your kids really wanted a fire. Yes. And you're trying to make My fire, and it fire. keeps going out. No. And no. you're over there, and you're, no. No. and you're blowing and waving cardboard and stuff onto your fire that you're going to cook on, because that's what you use campfires for. <laughs> Uh, you're trying to put oxygen in there to make the the fire hotter. Yes. And that, in a nutshell, is what they were trying to do with the pipe on the cat, is they're introducing oxygen into that cat to make it actually do what's called a light off um, because the early style cats just couldn't do it on their own. And then at some point, uh, an engineer went, hmm, we shouldn't do it with pellets and this other stuff. We should do it with this honeycomb material, and it doesn't need that. Right. And you can't even buy, to my knowledge, the, the, the old, old school style cat cats. Converters. And, and the issue that I certainly know we ran into was those cats, those old school ones specifically, plugged up. 
All the time. All the time, and then burnt your vehicle down. Uh, that did happen. Not yep. in like the good way that I've burnt. <clears throat> no, we we've things. known a couple. I'm not going to say the good way. I was going to say there's a good way. There's not a good way. <laughs> I, you know, I started that, and I thought, you know what? I should just not a stop. good way to burn it just down. Stop. We we know a, a, a bunch of, of family friends and, and others that have lost YJs to that early style cat. It's unfortunate. The the early dark years of the carbureted YJ. Yes. Have you burned one down with a cat? Um. So Derek, one of our uh, part time employees and one of our earliest employees, uh, we when we were in he high got school, to watch his Jeep burn. He got to watch his Jeep burn. That's always fun. And. Uh, he he drove it to school and he had all this like nice stainless because of course it's in the '90s so everything's still you know chrome won't get you home but stainless will yes and it, it was all decked out it was gorgeous and he drove it to school it was like 15 20 minutes pulled it into uh, the the parking lot and there was this the horrible smell mm-hmm. and what they do is they turn cherry red yep. And then they light your carpet. They light your insulation. It just doesn't take much for them to then Pain. light it on fire. Yep. Um, and he got to watch it melt down in the parking lot itself at school before yep. school started. Complete and total loss. Yep. And then um, my grandfather <clears throat> actually led uh, our fine men and women of the Kanya police uh, force on a slow speed chase while he yelled out the window, I just want to get home. And my grandmother like prayed and like <laughs> tried to like say I'm so sorry. And he actually went to jail for that. Um, <laughs> what, because his Jeep was on fire? Uh, his van. van we had a, of course, it was, he had a conversion van. Yes. So uh, the cat on his conversion van was on fire, mm-hmm. and he decided to drive it home. Yes. And other people thought that that was a poor decision. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he resisted arrest. Oh no! He was a wonderful. I mean, you know, let's not make this story like uh, he's the not make a. He's not a bad guy. This was an amazing man, hard worker, uh, yes. f- lifetime community member, church member, blah blah blah. He just he had a goal. He had a goal, and he was making that goal happen. He was an old man who was and determined. No young cop was going to dissuade him. He from wasn't doing... causing problems. He no. felt. And yep. he was just trying to get home. Yep. And they it's not found going that to fast, be fast. Not nope. drifting through stop signs while tires are ablaze. <clears throat> <laughs> None of that. Uh, he was driving his his camper Resp- van responsibly, responsibly home, so yes. it could burn down in his yard. Yes. And not on the but street. That he paid for it. Damn That's it. right. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep. All right. Okay. So, anyways, that, oh, yeah, we're on a tirade. God, <laughs> Scott, we got to talk about motors. motors. You know so, we catalytic talk converters. About? Cat- no, we should not. Don't look at your paperwork. Yeah. Davey folded it on purpose. No, the other motors. <laughs> I read a list. <laughs> So catalytic converters burnt us down. So then bring us up to the 90s, and things are more efficient. I was contextualizing the fact that the uh, federal regulatory regulatory bodies insisted by 95 that all of our vehicles had to be OBD2 compliant. Yes. And that compliance also had some federal... Uh, emissions well, expectations. You know why they, they actually did this is uh, back in the early years to of kill the change. electric car. N- I no. watched that documentary. Oh boy. Okay. Was actually to regulate it and make it standardized because prior to OBD2, GM had their own style plug in system, and Ford had their own, and Chrysler had their own, and AMC mm-hmm. had their own, and Mercedes had their own, and you used to get. Back in the day, you got a scanner, and the scanner was this big, and there was a box. Of all the adapters. Of all the adapters. And then you had to have, like, 50 operating systems that and all I was going to say, nicely. and then sometimes they didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they didn't become friends, and, and things were all a mess. And back then, if it was had a code, it was just real vague, and it said, this happened, I don't know why, and this sucks. It and, may have happened somewhere on the front of the vehicle. Yes. And that's why you hear horror stories like, I took it to the shop, and the guy replaced everything. That's because he only had a vague idea of what's actually broken. And actually how you test those is you get out ohm meters, and you check voltages. You do real mechanical work? You do real mechanical work. Oh, my gosh. That's scary. That's scary. So in in 96, they they kind of made a line in the sand that everything after that will be OBD2, which will have this standardized plug. It'll be in the standardized location unless you're volvo and you put in the center console heighten it somewhere Mm -hmm. um, and your operating system will be similar um and for the most part everybody played nice uh gm 
for a while decided they were going to make their special that you had to go to their dealership and scan it there and your local places scanner actually wouldn't communicate with it they got slapped on the wrist mm -hmm. i took to court from a small uh mechanics and told that you can't do that and the judge agreed and then they had to <coughs> reflash <Tesla. laughs> reflash Tesla coming for you elon <laughs> reflash all the 96s um, it was actually a pretty common thing to get a 96 and it wouldn't work and you had to take it to the dealer and they flashed it so that it would then communicate mm -hmm. um, and it just made things a little better uh, they did change some voltages and some other things as as part of that and the computer system changed but for the most part, the, the HO continued, I would argue to say, for a few more years until we had some more uh, mission regulatory standards we had to meet. Um, and at this point, we're, you know, we're nurturing a 63-era uh, straight six. Correct. And so they, they started the, the struggle again. It didn't involve as much vacuum hose, but it was very similar. Like, how are we going to make this old platform... Uh, conducive with the the new regulations that we and and i and i just because i i take a lot of heat because zj owners feel like i leave them out um yeah. <clears throat> and i i not un intentionally um because i do like the zj uh they at the time had a 5.2 they did and a and then a 98 one of my bucket list jeeps which i've kind of scratched that that itch was the uh, the one year production only of the limited ZJ with the five nine five nine, which, which is a Chrysler. The five two and the and the five nine are Chrysler or Dodge uh, sourced engines. That has also had been around for a long time, and uh, they were specifically the Magnum series, which was but not the same Magnum series as the trucks. They were somehow well different. So the you Magnum specifically was the heads and the intake design. But there was specifics with the Jeep mainly because we we're shoving a big V8 in a very small package. Right. So things didn't fit. And if you ever look at a V8 uh, ZJ, you'll know what I'm talking about because the air cleaner thing is like this tall because mm -hmm. it would rub a hole in the hood. Yes. If you did a like the Ram had a box this big with a filter on top. You weren't doing that in the you ZJ. You weren't getting that nice airflow. Um, um, so there was very specific, like, exhaust manifolds and other things, but the actual design of the head, if you go back to an old 5.2 or 3.18 to, and then compare that to a Magnum, it had similar things as, like, the 4-liter went through where they were like, hey, we can actually make valves better and this flow better, and, and because of that, like, valve covers changed and some other things, basically like they did with the 4-liter. It was real similar. So that pretty much rounds us out for the 90s, though, right? 5.2, five, 5.9, five, and 4.0. Well, uh, for the most part, I, I believe we've covered them all. The, the four-cylinder, the 2.5, did, did go oh, through a couple things motor. Um, as well. Similar you know, expansions and stuff, um, but nothing too crazy okay. until we get into the 2000s. So we get into the 2000s, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say the armpit of all motors uh, – <laughs> Well, there's two, two. Well, we have the left armpit and we have the right armpit, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so we have the uh, the two four four cylinder. Yes. Garbage. <laughs> and because uh, we pulled that out of a Dodge Neon and yes. shoved that into a Jeep or a PT Cruiser or a PT Cruiser. Yeah. Um, but then, but of course, what we had to do was retool things so that we couldn't even easily use the parts from those motors and from no. those applications. In our Jeep application. So, so part of that problem is at some point in, in the 80s, we decided as a domestic market, we were not going to be able to compete with the foreign people across the pond. So we would just get in, in line with them and, and become partners with them. And, and they Can't all beat them, did join it. them. So, you know, Mitsubishi came into Chrysler and they did a lot of cross branding. Some stuff from domestic market went overseas and some of their stuff came here and they rebranded it. You know, uh, hashtag Dodge Colt mm -hmm. example, that kind of stuff. And I, they did the same thing. Um, they had a little truck, had a 2.4 engine, and they used the same same engine in their front wheel drive cars but the block was different the valve cover was different and i think that an engineer like either got inspired by that or was the same guy and, and was like hey let's do the same thing but with our domestic model sure and i'm sure they had a heavy hand in designing the two four that was used in the ne neon and the pt cruiser and that kind of stuff so likewise we have a, a rear wheel drive only block it actually says our you know, rear wheel drive right on it. Right. Uh, the valve cover is special. 
Um, and, and for the only part that really blows my mind is probably for shifter placement, but the engine is cuddling with the firewall. Way it back. Way, way back. back. I mean, there is a space like that between it and the radiator. And and then this is the exciting part. This is a, the hack for you. If you want to put an e-fan on your 4-liter equipped TJ and you want to make it look factory and it bolt in, yes. go find a 2-4 blown up in the junkyard, which is probably pretty easy. Easy enough because they're junk. junk. <laughs> and find that, that fan because it had an e-fan and pull it out and put it on your Jeep. It'll bolt right up to the radiator. And the fact they have an e-fan is because they actually did not have enough oomph to run a mechanical fan. Well, it was never designed to have have that. Yeah, that too. There's no spot for it. Your AC will also turn off when you're trying to go uphill. Yes, um, which is probably wise. It, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of things. And really, if I just take my disdain of that particular platform one step further, in 2003 specifically, maybe into four, they actually had a really crummy transmission. Yes. So a couple, a couple just, just take one bad egg and just, just set it next to it. Just keep it going. You know? yes. So put it in a whole rotten. Bad things happen. So, so there's a 2.4. And then uh, that was you know, 03, 04. Uh, 2.4 as, as itself is... Okay, it is is what it is. Yes. Um, and, by and they, 07. Well, they made that motor up till 06, and they did they put did. that into a Liberty as well. They did. They did. <sighs> and interestingly enough, uh, the, you can still get a 2.4 um, from Jeep. And it's not the same motor. It's not the same motor. And not so understand close. that the Liberty and the Wrangler motor were unique unto themselves. Yes. And, and those nails have been put in that coffin and it is gone. Yes. Um, and they can be rebuilt at this time. We do understand that. But they all uh, present certain challenges. unique challenges. Yes. So then by, uh, you know what, I think what we need to do, hmm. we're going to have to talk about JK era and, and stuff at another episode. Yeah. We, we did this. I think two seconds, we should just say there's a 3.7 optioned in the Liberty as well, and they weren't much better than that. 3.7, uh, uh, Liberty, Commander. Yep. And then we also got to talk about the 4.7 for two seconds. Oh. You either had a good 4.7 oh, or a bad 4.7. I can't four wait seven. to talk about the 4.7. Folks, we're doing that. We're going to move it into yet uh, another, another one. Another podcast, because we're... we're talking too much about motors again we really like <laughs> motors we like how things work and make them go uh it's important to note folks that you can join us live 10 19 on mondays um and then the podcast goes up on you know up on the uh, your favorite streaming and podcast site on wednesday yep uh one of the fastest rising uh auto enthusiast uh, podcasts on the market at the moment. Pretty exciting uh, roller coaster around there, and then it'll be on the old YouTube on by Friday. Yep. So we are going to take a quick commercial break, then come back and talk about these awesome JKS quicker disconnects. Hey, Jeep family, we hope that you're enjoying this content, and we want to make sure that you head over to sfj4x4.com, find some of this cool merchandise. Give us a call at our facility, 440-813-3663. Option one. Option one. And make sure that you tune in to our live podcast every Monday at 1019 a.m. And check out our updates on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. Until then, Jeep on. Intro us. Intro. Don't, we, don't we have a sound? Didn't you say we had a sound thing? Or no, that's and now it's time it for is. our product spotlight. Hashtag no sponsor. Spotlight. Hashtag no sponsor. Sorry, I was distracted because we were talking about how no one's commented. Well, it's because the three don't, people don't who usually us? watch us uh, are are sad because we we pulled a fast one and we pre-recorded last week. Mm. And where's your wife at? I don't so know. She's, so she's one of the three. Yes. Um, Where are you at, honey? Okay. Let me down. There, right. Right. There's, there we go. Ryan. Yay, Ryan's Ryan. Here. Yay, <laughs> Ryan. There just wasn't anything interesting, right? Oh. I was like, you know, honestly, guys, it was a, it was not a good show. Oh, you woke me <laughs> so, up. You woke um, me up. You talk about motors way too long. It just, it's, it, I'm here obligatorily. I'm hoping you say something special there about my There we go. Game. Hey, there are actually there's people out laughing. there. Yay. All right. All right. Uh, there's, there's our three. So <laughs> your wife, Ryan, and Kevin. That's so, You know what? It was. We needed the transition, the music. It woke yes, everyone up. Yes, it did. Uh, <laughs> the 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 transition music. That's right. The uh, hashtag not sponsored segment. Yes, we like um, these a lot. 
and uh, <laughs> so, oh, good. Savage is is messaging us no. from from the In behind the camera. Us. Yeah, thank you, thank you, baby. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we have these, these discos. I have used them personally on a multitude of jeeps. Uh, they just plain work. Um, they are greasable. They are serviceable. Uh, they are fully adjustable. There is stainless stuff in here. Um, they really try hard to make a really nice product. Um, I've had these on my JK for 50-ish mile, 1,000 miles on it. I was say 50 miles? And, uh, and they do, do great. I had a set of these on the uh, Chuck Norris when I wasn't Chuck Norris mm -hmm. when I had it. And I had a set of these on my XJ when it had a sway bar for two seconds. <laughs> and uh, yep. they're just plain good stuff. So, uh, without indicating my extreme love affair with JKS as a as a business, yep. um, <clears throat> I actually we was really like them. Yeah, and and interestingly enough, it was a it's a business that started in a guy's garage in Montana mm -hmm. um, many many years ago, and uh, had been acquired and then reestablished in Southern Michigan at this point. Uh, good USA made company, yep. and these. These are, are sway bar disconnects, and without getting into the complete sciences behind why you should disconnect your sway bar. Yes, and you should do that. Um, anytime you get a chance, look at the construction of these, and then go pick whatever rando brand you want to pick, and look at the construction of theirs, and you'll understand why we like these. Nine times out of ten, you'll notice the robust nature, the adjustability, yep. um, the, the ease of use that these specifically offer you. Now, what's interesting about sway bar disconnects, and actually we could probably talk about it for a, uh, for a segment yeah, on easy. the different options that are out there and why, um, with a reasonably low center of gravity Jeep, right? And I say that, I mean, something that's, you know, under, you know, say a JK under four inches, uh, TJ under four and a half to under six inches, um, you really want to disconnect your sway bar to allow your axle to have its full range of motion for yep. articulating off-road. Yep. And then for comfort reasons, you want to have it connected for on-road driving. It yep. doesn't make it unsafe necessarily, um, but it affects the pitch and yaw of the Jeep. It comes a sailboat. And, and so <laughs> you really start to feel uh, what's called roll center. So you feel where the mass is distributed um, of, your, of your Jeep. And so you, you really accentuate the roll center. Um, and so some people's roll center is higher or lower than others. Yep. There's a whole conversation to be had about why the, uh, rock, the Curry Rock Jock Anti-Rock um, is a great design. Yes, even we though really it is like a, those as well. We do, even though it is a torsion bar uh, design similar to your factory sway bar, um, but it's 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 better with higher center of gravity rigs, um, yep. and so we could always talk more about that in the future. Yes. What's valuable about the JKS quicker disconnects um, is that robust construction, the yes. fact that they can take a beating. Um, some customers, them. they're fully serviceable. There's actually service kits available for them. Yep. Uh, if a bushing, a pin, um, something like that fails. Well, in a pinch, too, the pins are relatively available any tractor store or any hardware store as well. Absolutely. And and as a company, they really try to stand behind their product line as they well. They do. And uh, interestingly enough, the rep for a couple of years actually, you know, don't quote me on this, but I know factually as of last year, um, had a cup of pins in the back of their show Jeep mm. so that when somebody comes up to them at a show and is like, you know what, I love that, but it snapped my finger and it fell out because I didn't have it fully seated, he would reach into the back of his of his Very demonstration good. and he would hand you a pin. I mean, that's just great just customer nice. service. Yes. You know, like you said, it's it's not special. It's, it's not magic. You can yeah. buy it at any tractor and store. And you want it to try to snap your finger because then it doesn't want to come off. And that is yeah. That is the unfortunate yeah. reality of the design. Just work with work with caution. <laughs> work with caution. <laughs> so without uh, you know, without going on too far about those great yep. product. Yep. Um, we use them personally. We use them personally. We put them on you know eight out of ten builds. Yep. Um, great product there. And so if you have any questions about that, you can email us. You can call us. You reach out um, on the program. Um, but definitely very cool, not sponsored product there by JKS. Jeffrey, Davey, 
Oh, you're you're gonna love the game today. <clears throat> oh, I'm scared. We have a game, folks, which is par for the course. Awake. If you're still awake, In this here. is the the time that you're waiting for for Scott and I to begrudgingly play Jeffrey's game. This is like a bad game of from Jigsaw and. Oh no no! I I, I think this transition is gonna wake everyone up. Oh, oh no. boy! Oh no! Oh. Neil, are you ready? Scott, are you ready? It's time for. What did you think I said? We do this every day. Yeah, unfortunately, that's all the time. I, yes, the rule. I mean, literally, you followers. saying this morning, you were trying to explain a customer's last name to us. You're missing all One the of directions. you will be given a pair of headphones that is oh. blasting music so that you cannot hear oh. what the other one is saying. <laughs> the player not being blasted by music in the headphones will be given a random phrase to say while looking at the opponent. I'm not listening. <laughs> because, the one because wearing the headphones. We have must all this expensive equipment. What is being and said? Our producer just spilled his water bottle. <laughs> That's not my water bottle. That's not my water bottle. I just have water. I have my coffee. I was sitting here open next to you. I thought it was yours. I, <laughs> yeah, you stole his drink. It's holding up the JS disconnects. <laughs> I have no idea. Is that. <laughs> we know how to handle this. We have small All right. children. All right, then we're good. We're good. We're, the TV's so, mint. So Spontan. the headphones, the All headphones right. that you're going to be using for this game are located in front of Scott. They are hooked into Davy's phone. I oh, know. And he is going to be blasting you with his choice of music. Oh no! While one of you is reading the phrase, and the other has to guess what is being said by reading your lips. I am terrible at this game. Like you know, like in high school. Like, there's a cute girl across the room, and she's mouthing something to you? No, it never happened to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a bad example. I'm so glad I bad met, my wife, met my wife in high school and bad took example. a on me. Took the lame Poor Scott. guy she in. She took the lame under her and wing. Then, and then I was like, hey, she's she's willing to write on this. I'm just, I'm committed. We're good. <laughs> Changing my mind. She took in the wounded duck. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, so well, okay. So, how, so tell me about it, football so player. How people were mouthing me stuff across. They were their... just mouth to you because obviously you didn't want the you know the teacher to hear that you're trying to like make plans of some oh. capacity after I think they class. Text now. Well, I'm certainly text now. I'm certainly do. <laughs> Not but, dating ourselves at all. Uh, it was but too far for turn a, around a, and they would a mouth. note to get folded. And, and get I would just you. have to be like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> like, I don't know. Talk to me later. Pass me a note like everybody else. Yeah. Right. My wife is so good at this. I am not. Well, Scott, go ahead and put on the other headphones. Oh, no. Be kind to of my ears, Davey. Well, don't let Scott see it. I'm going to read this to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you listening to? <laughs> I... This is so bad. I can actually hear it through. I am singing. It's my turn to sing. Okay, okay, before we get in trouble for copyright. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you ready? You just... All right. <laughs> You're... All right. This is not going to go well. Under, <laughs> under water. <laughs> he showed fish. me the thing, and I can't tell what it was. <laughs> Underwater, fish Something don't with fish. stink. Underwater. Why are, you, why are your headphones off? I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. So, so, I can't so what, did you, right. what did you think he was saying? I It, it was the peanuts voice. Where the teacher's <laughs> talking, it's meh, 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 meh. So, Scott... Scott, fail. Fail. All okay. right. This is how this is going to go. Bring the heat. Bring the heat. Okay. Turn it up a little more, Davey. No. <laughs> he showed me the thing, and I, it was so much music. My brain I'm not going to lie. I love this song. <laughs> 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 this is surreal. This is a surreal, amazing experience. And I'm... Blue is I've... greener than purple. <laughs> this is not going to happen. Fail, because your brain can't concentrate, <laughs> especially his brain. Okay. So what? What did Scott say? What did Scott say? I have no idea, cause I'm just I'm having too much fun dancing. 
Oh, that uh, one. Follow you all day. No. Uh, anyway, I think this is this is burn. This is not going to happen, Jeff. <laughs> you made it too hard again. Hey, wait. Put it back We're on. Totally going to get copyrighted not, on this. Not, now, while his while his headphones are on, you could say. Whatever I have no you want idea what's him. happening here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. We had a teacher in school. God, I love this song. That, that was like. I like the English. I, I think he was 105. Song. He and they tried to find him things to do. It was in junior high, so we had these old books that were test books that were at least five to six years old. It's not even current stuff. And he had this huge hearing aid, but he still couldn't hear you. And that was his purpose. He's like had like a year left to retire. So we went into this class and you could tell the kids would literally tell him off to his face. And he'd be like, okay, you have a nice day too. I feel like I missed something really cool. <laughs> it was about you. Don't worry about it. He's like, you could say anything you want about him right now, and he won't be able to hear you. And I was like, yeah, that happened in, in school, in junior high, in Ashtabula. <sighs> that was such a good song. Davey, I am so thankful that you chose that song for me. Uh, that was a terrible game. Yes. And uh, we're just going to cut it right there Done. because I danced like a fool. Because I'm we're, on a great high note at this and point. And we're over time, <laughs> and we're not getting any of and those. And we're not going to do those. Like, My the, brain just, can't concentrate on music. You know what? And, uh, my recently, my mom and I were talking about like the idea of like ambient extra noise and then the ability to focus. Yes. Um, on a person's speech, you know. Yes. Uh, if it's a song I know, it can can become background noise, and then that's nothing fine. about that was becoming background no, noise. No. no, that was that was blasting. Fail. That was awesome. <laughs> He had it so loud when it was on Scott that I could hear it through our yeah. system. I know. I it think was your fantastic. revenge was, was being sought. It was there. great. That was a good song. I don't know about your song. It was like polka. And no, like his, his song was Nacho Libre. That was his song? I'll take your word for it. Huh. <laughs> From the movie. From the Jack Black movie? Yeah. Huh. I didn't hear it. No. Well enough, I guess. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, there you go. The, the, those of you who have fallen asleep. Actually, you didn't fall asleep. Now you're like looking at me dancing like a fool. and like, oh, God. Uh, that guy. You, you notice yes. nobody commented on it. No. They, no. they were no. too they embarrassed for again. you. They were embarrassed for me. Mm, yes. Uh, you couldn't hear. It's, it's like watching the lip syncing contest. They're like, oh, I bet that person is really grooving in their mind. <laughs> Man, it was a surreal <laughs> experience for me. It was yes. really fun, actually. Mm. All right. Uh, that was... That was uh, <clears throat> Episode number 23, yep. we're going to push it into 24 because motors make us happy. Yes. Motors make us go. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, actual motors of today. Yeah. Not <laughs> historical <laughs> motors yeah, we, of today. We didn't get there. And, uh, and hopefully we can get from like, you know, 90, or 2007 to present. Fight. I'm going to have a lot to say about the 3.8. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be at least two more podcasts before no, we get no, to No, 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 because nobody will listen to us. They'll be like, okay, that was <laughs> that, that is way not entertaining. Yeah. All right, folks. We hope that, uh, you know, if you're still awake, that you enjoyed your time with us. Um, if you are listening to us in the vehicle while you're commuting, that you've gotten to where you need to be safely, yes. uh, take a moment to leave us a review on your favorite streaming uh, site. We have a, a lot of very good reviews on iTunes and Audible and, and so on and so forth. So we thank you for joining us there. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all those cool things on YouTube. Uh, you can interact with us. We actively read that and we respond uh, appropriately to them, ideally. And, uh, and obviously, uh, in the future, if you'd like to watch us live and join uh, commenting and, and sharing in the fun that we have here, you can join us on Facebook at 10, 19 a.m. almost every Monday. Yes. Uh, contextualize and, and that. And please do you. interact with us. And, and do interact with us because we get lonely. And we and, get complexes. Uh, very, very uh, <laughs> complex. Yes. So until then, you can uh, reach us online at sfj4x4.com. Call into our physical facility, 440-813-3663, extension One. numero uno. And until then, Jeep family, Jeep on. Jeep on. Jeep on.